Oh my god, check the news guys. One hour later. The incoming reports of a mass exodus of thousands and thousands of people flocking to the borders in mass hysteria. More from our man on the scene. Literally everyone with a degree has suddenly left the country. Thank you, our man on the scene. What are undergrads going to do now that they're the nation's foremost minds on everything from medicine to engineering to reporting news? More on that later. And in other news, the government has again tripled tuition fees, and the current acting prime minister is probably the resident cat in number 10. All transport has come to a standstill, but at least the footy still seems to be fine. All nuclear reactors have been decommissioned immediately. Uh, did you just get a message from the Prime Minister? Yeah. yeah. You got it as well? Yeah, I think we've just been recruited to build a wind turbine. How long will it take? One month. Many months later. So, for the design of our wind turbine, we choose to use two airfoils along the blade. At the root of the blade, we use the thicker one, the E210 airfoil. It is for structural reasons, as the stress at the root is going to be high. Using a thicker airfoil prevents any structural failure that might occur. At the tip of the airfoil, we choose to use the SG6043, which is a thinner airfoil. By using a thinner airfoil, we can reduce the mass, and also this airfoil has a good lift characteristics, which means we can harness the maximum amount of power by using this airfoil. So, the overall design of the blade, we choose to use a TSR of 2 pi. This is from our literature research, as it shows a TSR of 2 pi is the optimum for wind turbines. And we decide to use a 2 blades design with a folding mechanism. This is because there's a constraint of the dimensions. By using a 2 blades and a folding mechanism, we can maximum the amount of volume we can use. Now, the third point is the twist along the blade. As the airflow flows past the blade, it is going to turn with the airfoil, which means as we go along the length of the blade, the tangential velocity is going to vary. It's going to be the highest at the tip and the smallest at the root. From our research, we, we know that we should keep the circulation at each point of the blade to be constant, which means we need to apply some kind of a twist. And for this, we used the base method. The first step, we calculate the angular velocity of the overall blade. The second step, we calculate the tangential velocity at each point along the blade. So the end here represents the position along the blade. And the third step, we calculate the relative velocity seen by the blade at that point, which is a simple trigonometry. And the last step, we use the twist calculated from the tangential velocity over the relative velocity minus the optimum angle of attack of the blade. And this alpha is the optimum angle of attack we chose for that, for these two specific blades, which means at this angle of attack, it's going to have the optimum CL. Because of limitations in principal size, to maximize diameter, we chose to have the blade printed in a folded position, requiring a hinge to hold it together. A connector was to hold these halves together during printing, and then slide it to a cavity when they were put together, so that it would rest flush with the surface. Placing the hinge on the side meant both training edges were aligned with a favorable printed direction, which would give them a finer edge. Design started with the cone. Designs that fully encompassed the provided hand were too heavy, so in the end, a small cone made of the front 12% cord of a symmetric airfoil was used. Teeth were added for more gluing surface, as well as holes for bolts and a grub screw to fix the cone to the hub and the hub to the shaft. The blade was assembled in Korea, section by section. Obviously, using our core distribution, the root would be too large to be of any efficient use to the turbine, so it was cut down with a linear taper before 15% of the length. Consequently, the section in this tapered root was the thicker E210 airfoil, so it would have larger area. The minimum cord at the very base was also kept large enough to prevent tensile failure of the blade slash cone intersection. Finally, a small amount of rounding was added to the root's intersection of the cone to eliminate sharp corners that would possibly affect loading and aerodynamic performance. To finish off, we added a simple elliptical wing tip to minimize drag. Our hexagonal hub was drilled, milled, and a keyway was cut. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, the hinge did not survive the printing and bathing process. 
and a piece of trailing edge had broken off one of the blades, but was then stuck back on. After gluing with special cheese and extensive sanding, the assembled turbine was ready to be tested. The design is then tested in a wind tunnel, where the turbine is subjected to four different speeds, 6, 8, 10, and 12 meter per second, which can be controlled by a PID controller. The turbine starts self-spinning at 3 meters per second. As the turbine is free spinning up to its maximum RPM, resistance is then applied by an electromagnetic brake and a torque transducer measures the power output and the corresponding RPM. Here's a graph that shows the performance of our turbine. As we can see, the power is increasing as the RPM is slowing down, but eventually reaches a limit due to stall. The turbine is performing at its best at 12 meters a second wind speed, producing a power of 82 watts at 1,990 RPM. From the testing, the maximum CP is measured to be 0.195, which is 32.8% of the best limit. In the design phase, the predicted TSR at maximum CP is 6.28, which is very close to the testing results of 6.24. We can see an interesting phenomenon at 8 meters a second, where the power recovers after an initial stall. Our turbine successfully ran all the tests and challenge required, all this while sticking to the given constraints. The mass was below the maximum threshold, and the angular velocity never exceeded 3000 RPM. And thanks to our folding design, our relatively large turbine fit within the specified space for 3D printing. The predicted TSR for maximum CP was 6.28. From our testing, we found that the actual turbine at maximum CP had a TSR of 6.24, resulting in a very small error of 0.6%. Our predictions were so accurate due to taking into consideration things such as finding the optimal RPM for the size of our turbine by accounting for the settling time of air, as well as using models that accounted for things such as speed reduction due to the blockage close to the turbine, all of which affected the twist distribution. Furthermore, the fact that our turbine was structurally sound enough not to experience any vibration or resonance during the test, likely due to our thicker root, meant the aerodynamics were not affected. The attained CP of 0.195 is comparable to commercial wind turbines of similar size at 12 meters per second wind speed, albeit slightly lower. The turbines we compared ours to had CPs ranging from 0.2 to 0.3 for diameters of 1 meter to 2.5 meters. One possible reason for our CP being lower than expected is that the smoothness of our blade surfaces was not quite what we wanted, resulting in a loss of efficiency. As predicted by calculation, larger turbines tend to have better efficiencies, justifying our folding mechanism to maximize the diameter of our turbine for the given print bed. During testing, several things were noted. It was immediately noted that even at exceedingly low wind speeds, the turbine self-started. Furthermore, it was also noted that after the test, when the tunnel was being powered down, the turbine kept spinning at wind speeds as low as 3 meters per second. This was likely due to our relatively late taper for the root section, leaving a large area of the blade close to the center of rotation. This meant that even when the relative airspeed for the blade is directly at it, such as when it is not spinning, the central section of the turbine is still able to generate lift due to its low twist. In addition, our selected airfoil for the majority of the blade, the SG6043, has a very smooth lift curve slope, leading it to have gentle stall characteristics. This was expected and was purposely done, as it is beneficial for turbines to be able to operate in as many environments as possible, and does not affect performance at much higher wind speeds due to the root not contributing much drag because of the lower relative velocity. Throughout the lower wind speed runs of 6 and 8 meters per second, it was noted that as the brake was applied and the angular velocity of the turbine dropped, there was a sudden jump in power output as the blades approached stall. We concluded that this was due to how the twist of the blade was optimized for the velocities close to stall. This is because of our selected airfoil's lift curve slope, having a second peak at high angles of attack at the Reynolds number we were operating at of around 100,000, resulting in a sudden increase of lift as the speed was decreased and the angle of attack increased. Coincidentally, this is also the approximate critical Reynolds number of our selected airfoil, which is the point at which the flow would transition from turbulent to laminar, decreasing drag. It was also observed that there was a significant increase in noise for the 12 meters per second run, which is reflected in the plots, where it can be seen that just past the 3000 RPM point, there is a substantial fluctuation of the power output. This is possibly due to the aerodynamic effects such as flutter causing the blade to vibrate and resonate at this angular velocity. Tip losses were also a possible contribution, however these were minimized by precisely designed elliptical blade tips. The turbine was designed to operate at just below 3000 RPM, so this did not affect performance and did not damage the turbine as it was not exposed to the vibration for long. The blade has survived the test with 12 meters per second wind speed, and no sign of blade resonance was spotted during the test. So the structural design is good. The blade is designed to self-start, which is proven by the test. Maximum power coefficient is achieved at a TSR of 6.24, which is very close to the design value. And the size and weight of the turbine are within restrictions. Besides, the noise level is good and there's no squealing throughout the test. Overall, the design objectives are fulfilled, but improvements on the blending between blade sections can be made 
to increase the maximum power coefficient.